Hello dear viewers and subscribers, all 105 of you, welcome to my four newest followers, glad to have you on board. And today marks the beginning of our new adventure, I'm titling it KSP to Mars. And the first thing you will notice here is that we are presented with a, an option for the tech tree. Now, there are a lot of options here and none of them are familiar to me. I'm playing today with the KSP Interstellar mod, which adds a host of new possibilities, engines, technologies and difficulties, none of which I'm familiar with, so I'm going to select that and let it surprise me. That is basically also the trend of today's uh, series, of today's and onwards series. I'm playing with a couple of mods, first the realism ones that could be familiar to you if you watched my previous series, A Mission A Day, playing with Deadly Reentry, Ferrum Aerospace Research, and those will serve to make uh, the basic tenets of the game a little bit more difficult. However, today we are also adding the real solar system mod, which basically transforms the KSP scene, the KSP solar system, to our solar system. So everything is larger, everything is more difficult, and that's also why the series will be titled KSP to Mars, because even though the planet will be titled Juna in the game, it is it will have all the same properties as Mars, and that will be our goal for the series. Now, we are considering ourselves to be stranded on Kerbin. We have materialized in a pod on the launch pad, and it is it will be our goal to, well, get to Mars and to do what there I don't know yet we could settle for a surface sample return mission or establish a colony but first we are going to have to have a look at uh, at how to get there and how the space program works in this different universe I'm time warping now to make it be day and then I'm going to hop out with Jebediah and gather some launch pad science so that we can hopefully unlock the decoupler so we can build a rocket to do some exploration you will notice it will take a lot longer to become day because of course this planet is earth sized and not Kerbin sized so that will hold true much the same for oh dear don't know what happened there I didn't see the sun go through the air but it's apparently dusk again anyway everything is large so it will take a long time I'm going to ask Jebediah for a crew report he can store that in the capsule and this whole new series will give me a nice opportunity to play around with the new tech tree of point 23 even though it's been a few weeks now since that um, tree has actually been new so we are uh, you might know more about it than me is what I'm saying so I'm going to take a surface sample from the launch pad it says the surface is charred and coated with burnt rocket propellant. There are also trace amounts of conspicuous green substance. Quite ominous, and we are of course expecting casualties in this program, but hoping uh, not to have any, obviously. I'm going to recover this vessel, get our science in. It's maybe a bit cheaty way to get the first science points, but keeping with our story that we've just materialized, woken up on the launch pad, it stands to reason to do a little bit of science there. So. Let's recover Jebediah. And that's that with the expectation of casualties and problems. That goes for in-game Kerbals, but it might also go for the series as a whole. None of these mods are particularly stable. If we run into too much trouble or if it turns out to be just plain not funny, I might not continue this series. But so far I'm quite excited to be exploring a new tech tree with new technologies, new parts in a somewhat more realistic solar system. So for now I am hopeful. So let's have a look. We have 10 science points from that little launch pad excursion allowing us to unlock basic rocketry which looks much the same as it does in the basic game giving us a decoupler and the first science unit. So going to research that for those five points and then we move on to survivability, the small engine, the landing legs and the radial parachute, stability, some fairings, that's new, more decouplers and fairing base and here we have general rocketry so far things look much the same and we have no we have not enough science points for any of this so as I was saying I'm going to build a rocket now but I'm also going to cut out 
and try and fix my computer because I'm getting 15 frames per second which is not enough so I'll be seeing you after that is fixed and here I'm back I've designed the Arcturus our first space mission it has three stages. The first stage here is three stacks of fuel tanks with, of course, their engines and two boosters. The second stage is a three stack, uh, three tank stack with one engine. And the final stage is a solid rocket booster with a thrust limiter of about 15 kilonewtons. So it's firing a lot less forcefully than um, the stock ones do. Now I'm very anxious to see how this rocket does here in the real solar system. Gets off the bat just fine and this would be enough in the stock game to basically go very very far. Just three tanks and an engine are enough to put you in orbit most of the time but we will see how we get on with this. I'm in fact going to angle to the east counter to the Coriolis effect because the mission is not so much to get into orbit where we need every bit of delta V. The mission is to... oh shit. The mission first and foremost is not to crash. I had forgotten that we are playing with Ferrum Aerospace enabled which makes haphazard steering of rockets um, a bad idea. So I'm going to cut the engines here, ditch the stage and proceed with this one and hopefully this is slender enough to be controlled. I'm going to engage the SAS system. No, I'm not. I'm going to try and steer it up. I wanted to do some science, but as it as things are looking now, that won't happen. We appear to have regained some measure of stability, but the rocket is still cartwheeling out of control. Jebediah is at the controls. That surely doesn't help. I'm going to observe the goo to at least get some science in and ask him for yes keep that science data ask him for a report keep that oh we can transmit that great now with the point 23 of course it does matter if you choose to transmit data or take it back home by transmitting you will in fact uh, hit a wall a lot sooner than you would in the previous version but all that aside, we are in fact heading back up again. I think some of my difficulties are coming from having the goo canisters on top of the rocket, which are fairly heavy and make it wobble, or the or it's just a solid booster, which is a heavy mother indeed. Whatever it is that's going on, we are not doing too well, and I'm going to abort the mission by dropping the rocket and attempting to float down on a parachute. So, first mission, not that successful, but we do at least have some science to take home. Keep that data. And we will do the other two canisters when, when we are on the ground. And then Jebediah can take a surface sample as well, and hopefully that will be contain some useful data again. Yes, we are aware of the problems with physical time warp. Thank you very much. This is a clean install, so all those pop-ups and things are very much still enabled. Of course, we are going to retry this mission, but not before we get some... Ooh! The booster exploded, but we have a jumble of goo containers that we might be able to recover. Possibly. Oh, they are falling through the terrain. That is probably something to do with the real solar system, so that one was lost. I'm just going to hit recover now before anything else falls into that dark abyss. That should not happen. We have a hey, recovery of a vessel that survived the flight. Five science points. Thank you very much. And I have no idea how to get those goo canisters, but I will, I will count them destroyed and launch another Arcturus. Um, I thought I did recruit some astronauts. I don't really want to fly with Jebediah again. Let's recruit some more. Let's get Fredbury, Shepner, and James. James is going to fly this one. So, Hello James, welcome to your ship. I hope you do better than Jebediah. We are going to now attempt to steer the ship as soon as it lifts off and then not touch the controls anymore like Jebediah didn't do. So launching that now, steering it to the west, it's 
hardly steerable. So to angle it over like a half of a degree, all I want to do is head away from the ocean because I don't really want to sample the ocean. I would like to, well, get a different area of Kerbin under my microscope. But it does appear as though any steering I am doing is very fictitious indeed because this exact same thing is happening as happened last time. I think this top bit is just too heavy, has too much drag. So this rocket is now also doomed. Not a great start. Not a great start at all. So let's see if we cannot ditch this. And just, oh, I, now I ditched all of it. That surely isn't the idea. Now we have a solid booster and a parachute deployed. Great. Well, I'm very happy I'm not playing with financial constraints this game because I have a feeling we would not do so well. So far, the failures have nothing to do with the real solar system or the KSP Interstellar or anything. It's just plain old stupidity by yours truly. So we're going to attempt this again where we observe the mystery goo and ask Mr. James for a report, who looks very happy by the way. He seems to be ecstatic. Well, this report has nothing to add anymore and something I'm noticing just now is that we have a radiation level readout. So currently it's at zero nano sieverts per hour which should very much be safe. Oh, and our goo experiment has fallen off again. So, so far this Arcturus rocket is not that successful. I'm going to recover James though. He should not have to die for his designer's stupidity and then we are going to return to the vehicle assembly building and make a slightly simpler rocket to take advantage of... No, to work around the lack of wings aerodynamic nose cones and other such sensibilities. We don't want that. So 17 science in total now. We could probably research some technology but I don't want to research more than one node before actually launching something. So there's that. So we're going to delete all of this. Call the next chip Arcturus 2 because I like the name Arcturus. And we are going to keep it simple. We are going to drop two tanks here. An engine a decoupler. Let's have a look at that. Then drop three more tanks, another engine, and then we're going to remove this tank because otherwise this tank will be too heavy. See, I'm pro at rocket design. I'm going to add two canisters this time, and of course, two communotrons. I don't have any wings yet, so I can't make it aerodynamically stable. Is there a parachute? There is a parachute. And I'm going to add a decoupler for the thing to stand on. Hopefully, this will work a little bit better. Firing that engine first, then the engine, and then the parachute. Arcturus number two. Save that, and let's see how that goes. If that goes terrible as well, then maybe I forgot how to play this game. I'm not sure. Could happen. So, launching. Again, it's Jebediah. He always climbs in the seat if no one's watching, and no one was watching this time. So, going straight up at any rate this time, I'm going to try my angling to the west approach once more. And this time it appears to be working. No off center SRBs or any of that jiggery pokery. Everything appears to be in order. Now, I very much doubt that this rocket can get into orbit in the real solar system here. We require on the order of 9 to 10 kilometers per second of delta V, and this rocket certainly doesn't have that. So, our mission today is to get as far, as way, as far away from the launch pad as possible, and then, well, tell home about it, what we found, and get some sciences in, and maybe get a feel for how large this planet actually is. You can see the real solar system mod in action by looking at the horizon. It appears very much flat, even though we're at 5 kilometers altitude already. In the stock game you can see a very pronounced curvature already at this altitude. So I'm going to repeat the goo experiment. See, there we are promised the addition of 7 science points. 
although we have had that promise twice before already and it has never materialized so far. Oh dear. We are still going up, we are at 7 kilometers now, we're not terribly fast yet, but we are trying to cover ground, remember, not we're not trying to get into space or into orbit, so that's the first stage gone, and now the second stage kicks in, which has a lot more acceleration, because it's a small tank with a big rocket that will take us places, so let's see if we can add on some altitude in the final moments of this rocket, we are Breaking Mach 1, we're going supersonic now, and let us have a look at this mystery goop. In all probable, after transmitting, no, we don't want this. We want, we want to have a measurement of it even higher. Pointing straight up for the last bit of the flight, and the rocket burns out. So at our apoapsis, our highest point, we are going to observe the goo and hope that it's high enough to get a unique measurement. You might have noticed we've not really gotten anywhere, even though this rocket would have been sufficient to get into orbit in the stock game. So th certain things are certainly different. So I'm going to keep this data. Ask for a crew report. From Jebediah, he has nothing to say, and that means that I'm going to activate the parachute and hope that we can land safely. This part will be very boring, so I'm going to cut it out. See you on or near the ground. There, the parachute has deployed and the rocket has not been sheared from it, so we should be able to at least recover some science to get us some more technologies for a incremental and hopefully more successful launch next time. Wow, lots of explosions going on and hopefully we can in fact recover. We're going to recover the, the goo containers piece by piece because they're no longer attached to the main ship but we want those science points so we're going to do seven science here and we're going back to Jebediah's ship, the Arcturus 2. Go on, fly that. Has some clicking back and forth involved here but I hope for next mission to be able to design something that at least gets us into space. How and if we get back down again then is a completely different matter because that as well is a lot more difficult in the real solar system than it is in the Kerbin one. You see if you're in orbit around the Earth you're going at approximately 9 kilometers per second whereas if you're in orbit around Kerbin you can do so at a rather sedate 2 kilometers per second. The difference with deadly reentry is pronounced. Um, there will be a lot more heating in this version. The scaling up of the planet has made it a swamp, apparently, and Jebediah is feeling those effects. It's going to take an EVA report, Kerbin Shores, keep the data, and a surface sample as well, please. Took a sample of the soil, it's very muddy and sandy, there might be a body of water nearby, nice. So, he goes back into his pod, if he doesn't sink in the swamp board that and recover the vessel. So far we have not left Kerbin, we haven't even left the space station of the space station, the, the space center very far, but we did gather some important information to unlock some technologies. What we want, we want basically all of this. We want the more advanced engines and the bigger boosters. Uh, definitely want that. But we also want the radial decoupler. We want that badly because then we can make more interesting shapes and an aerodynamic nose cone. We want this more than we want the bigger rockets. So we're going to go for this. 18 science points and now we have 19 remaining. That means we can spend 15 on a smaller engine or save it so if we get one more we get a larger booster. That's a tough choice. I am going to go for save it. We will need bigger rockets instead of smaller rockets. Anyway, I'm going to end this first episode of KSP to Mars here, and I will see you tomorrow or whenever the next episode airs. I'm not going to do it day by day as I did mission a day, but I am going to attempt to do it fairly rapidly. So far, I'm quite impressed and a little bit daunted by the size of the real solar system Kerbin. It will be 
difficult indeed to get off it, but I'm going to design a rocket and I will see you at episode 2 to see how that goes. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, uh, leave them under this video, I always like to see them. And of course, if you didn't yet, please subscribe. This was Lorenzo, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.